Hello and welcome to Malware Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today's topic is Yara and how we can use it. Um, Yara is a tool, basically a signature scanner. And um, last week I found lots of ransomware using Yara. Um, people asked me how I did it, so that's the answer. I used Yara. Um, what is it actually? Let's take a look at the website. Um, the website says it's a tool aimed at helping malware researchers to identify and classify malware samples. With Yara, you can create descriptions of malware families or whatever you want to describe based on textual or binary patterns. Each description, aka rule, consists of a set of strings and a Boolean expression which determine its logic. Let's see an example. Uh, here's an example. So, um, yeah, today's topic is a small introduction into the using this signature scanner. The you cannot only find samples with that. So basically big websites like Veristol and others, they um, have a Yara scanner that they run on the files. And uh, that way you can find samples you want to look for. But you can also use that to read descriptions of malware families. For instance, you might search for Yara rules on the internet and then find things like um, these repositories. This is, um, how is this name? Oh, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> um, but here's a large repository of Yara roots for Melva family. So you could take a look at that, uh, like Black Worm. Check that out and see, okay, it has uh, all of these strings, then it's considered um, Black Worm malware. And in the same way you could um, provide information about um, files you find uh, to other Mavi researchers. So it's a great tool and I really think you should see it. So let's get started. Now we already know that. <laughs> uh, writing, let's get started with writing rules. So that's the most simple Yara rule you can have. A condition that's false, so it will never match. Um, that's easy, let's just do that. We start with the rule keyword and the name. And uh, in this case, I would like to, I would like to detect this ransomware family here. That's both files are a part of a ransomware I found. And yeah, um, IFN six four three ransomware. So we might just name it after that one. Right somewhere. Okay. And the condition. That's the minimum you have. So I make it true. I have an six for three. Okay. And then let's take a look at how it works. That's the tool and the usage is somewhere you just call Yara, then you told where the signature file is. And you can have lots of signatures in that file, not only one rule, but several. And then you say, for instance, the current folder, and you get the matches. It now it matches all files in the current folder. Um, okay. Now, we might want to add some metadata like the author. Okay, that's the author, that's us, and uh, a description. Awesome, right somewhere. Rule. That's our awesome ransomware Yara rule. Oh, it's a bad description, of course. <laughs> but uh, you can add anything you like here. For instance, the malware type or whatever you want. You can also add tags, like in this case, I would add ransomware because it's the main type of the malware we are matching. And we might want to check for 
certain strings in the file instead of just saying it matches everything. So that's our second uh, most important section of a rule. That's the strings section. And um, well, let's say we want to match this ifn six for three string. Then I would say, uh, yeah. Oh no, that's actually a good thing here. That's the name of the ransom node. We will just match to match that one. Um, ransom node, okay. And uh, it will complain now because of the slash here. Let's check it. It doesn't complain. I didn't save it because it doesn't. Okay. Now it says it's ah oh no, unreferenced string of course. Uh, I want this ransom node to be true, ransom node. And now it complains about illegal escape sequence. So that's because uh, this is a special character here and you need to escape it first. And then it works. Now it matches both of our IFN ransomware files by just searching for the ransom node. Now there's obviously a problem with um, using only that. Um, if you search for malware families, you usually run into trouble with anti-malware programs. So anti-malware programs also search for these strings and also for extensions uh, that are typical for the malware like .locky or .ifn643. And uh, those are also in the anti-malware program file. So it's a good idea to add some code or something that's not in the anti malware program. So what can we add? We could add the extension as well. I think extension, this one, we can say um, we want these to be in there too. Like or part of the ransom node, like your most critical files have been encrypted or sent bitcoins or whatever. You can add all of these strings and then, you know, then you could say, okay, if, or like, I can say all of them have to match. That's done like this. And it's the case. I could also say just, um, please only match one of them. That would be enough. And uh, then we match also our own file, the signature file, of course. Um, the Yara rules are not only for portable executable files, they will also match on text files or anything else. So um, there's a solution you could check for the type of the file first. Um, lots of people use the is PE rule for that. I found it in here somewhere. I'm not sure where. Is, oh, is PE? Yeah, there it is. Let's just copy it. It's a rule that will match all PE files. And it does so by looking for the MZ signature at offset zero. So it checks the 16 bits at zero for having that value 5A for D, that's MZ. And then it checks the P signature itself. It looks for the address of the P signature that's always at um, 3C. And then it uh, takes the value from that, from that location and it's compared to PE00. So um, that's a PE file. If you do that, you will get an SPE notification or match for every PE file. That's a bit annoying, you don't want that. Um, so just make this private. And you can add it now here, one of them and SPE. And now you get what you want. You get only your ransomware match. This match is ignored, but you can use it in the rule here. So um, only the P files are checked. 
and hmm, what else could we do to improve that? Um, there is, ah uh, yeah, there is a debug string. Now debug strings start with RSDS in our case, and then um, 20 bytes later, there starts the actual path to the debug string. And that's a good candidate to look for. We might create, um, now we might, this, these are strings obviously, but you can also use regular expressions. And I like to use a regular expression for the debug path, like this RSD is then um, the dot is for any character and this any character can be in the range of 20 to 300 bytes oh, and it's denoted like this so now it's a regular expression and i would say ransomware ifn ransomware yeah okay uh, that means somewhere in the debug pass has to be the string IFM ransomware and I think it was in those yeah yeah we could make that part okay and now let's check if it matches of course it matches I said one of them um, we can add the minus s option to, option to see uh, which match and this is not a match so uh, we did something wrong here oh yeah of course that's uh i forgot that one check again yeah now it works and um every string that matches is printed out and also the location where you find it in the file so you can check that it's correct and it works now. And I don't think it's a good idea to say one of them, like, um, and if you have a cleaning tool that cleans files with .ifn extension or uh, that cleans this ransom node, it might have, has a string in there too. So we might say, uh, please, you should have two of them. That would mean uh, two or more. Two of them does not mean exactly two. It means two or more, it's a minimum. So it can also be O3. Um, yeah. All, all of them. Simply. And that works well. Um, so that's a nice one, I guess. for this specific family. You could also do some general matches, like you could say ransomware generic. And you could say, okay, I want generic. Generic means you match a lot of samples uh, with your signature. And you could say this could say I want all files that are p files and that um, have ransomware in the debug path. Just one example. But of course, it's a bad example because you will match all anti ransomware tools as well because they have ransomware in the, um, in the debug path. So, really, just take this as an example um, that you can use as a basis to work on everything. And it matches. And it, I have a folder with some more ransomware samples. Let's see if that works. And there, our ransomware generic also matches because these um, ransomwares also have ransomware in the debug pass. There are some keywords that you can use to, to um, add some more things. Like you can say no case. It means we can now match RSDs. Well, it's actually not so good to have that in no case. But you can match um, the ransomware in the uh, in no case, okay, and then we have another match here, encrypt file, because it has probably a low case letter ransomware in the debug path. So just some experiments here. Um, yeah, 
a last one. Yeah, we make a last one just for fun. Well, I think you got the idea right now how you use a tool. Uh, for everything else, for like specific functions and so on, you can check the documentation, read it a bit, and I might leave some links below the video that um, also explain some cool features of Yara. But uh, let's check another sample. That's this one. Beautiful picture, JPEG. But if you look into it with a hex editor, or, well, that's everything all right. But if you look into it later, this program, yeah. Uh, here's the start of a P file. Now that's the MZ magic number. Here's the PE00 magic number. And that's the dust-up message. So um, we could make a generic signature to detect hidden P files. Like rule and I say, hidden PE in JPEG, something like that. And in the string section, we could say we want the dos.dap message. We could include the other one, dos.dap message, the second one, this, oh, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. And we could say, oh, we want the magic number of the JPEG. Now I checked it out, there are several, um, several magic numbers and none of them matches our file. That's a bit weird. <laughs> um, see this. Our file starts with ff, d8, ff, e2. Uh, none of them are in this list. I didn't check oh, what's wrong. Maybe it's just another ver version because that's e0 and that's e1. So whatever happens there. So we might just check that it starts with ff, d8, ff. And if you wanted all of that, we could do that as well. Just show you how, yeah, that's a way to check for patterns, for hex patterns in a file is this. Like you add those hex patterns in the curly brackets and you use the, those wildcards for any position where there can be any anything you like. And in this case, we might just remove that and check only for the three here. You need a condition and the condition says we want one of the dust step messages, doesn't matter which one. So we say one off and then we say dos step blah and we want the magic, magic at position zero. All right, I don't know. Let's see if it works. Is it in samples? Yeah. Now it complains that it slows down scanning, but it matches our JPEG file. So uh, critical because that's a very short pattern. And I'm not sure if it always scans for this, this pattern, although I only checked for it at position zero, so I'm not so sure. But uh, we can do that a bit differently, um, just like it's done here using the um, uint values and check for them directly. And then it won't complain. So that's a way out of it. But uh, for now, and for scanning only five files, it's okay. Um, so that's my introduction to Yara and um, have fun using it. Maybe if you are interested in it, check out the links below the video and the documentation on the main website because it's a good documentation. It's pretty much all you need. Um, there are a few more uh, keywords that are worth mentioning. One of them is the, uh, let's check the wide. I use the wide uh, keyword very often. That means uh, if you have Unicode, 
with um, you want to match Unicode strings with this, you say why. And if you want to match both Unicode and non-Unicode strings, you say why ASCII. So that's a possibility to include um, that. And there's another interesting thing that's the a global keyword here. We used the uh, private already. Now the global means that all of the rules in this file need to um, match this global rule. So we say private global, for instance. Now every file that we check has to be a PE file. That means our hidden in PE in JPEG does not work anymore. So let's check that. And yeah, it's correct. It's not a PE file and we made this rule global so um, it can't work anymore, this signature here. Um, yeah. And that's it. Alright. Have fun using Yara and see you next time.